Most people who are serious about their photography at some point or other decide that the basic adjustments provided by Photoshop under image adjustments for levels, brightness and contrast, hue and saturation, color balance, etc. are just not quite enough and that they want a more powerful tool. Many of them turn to the curves interface in Photoshop. The problem with the curves interface in Photoshop is it's very limited in its abilities to display edit and change curves. It also makes the interface very non-friendly for a lot of people. At CurveMeister we have an interface that is easy to use and in a few moments I'll show you what it looks like but I want to show you some of the limitations of Photoshop first so you have a better understanding why we think CurveMeister is so good. For instance here in the RGB color space I can only see one channel at a time. I have to choose individual channels and make choices to get at each of the curves or I can look at the master composite curve. If I place my mouse out in the image I don't have any frame of reference on the curve as to where I need to make my adjustment. If I wanted to adjust this area of the image right here there's nothing on the Photoshop curve that tells me what that is. I can set a shadow point I can set a whiteness point and I can set a midtone point. But they don't show me where on the curve those things are and in fact it has created three additional lines on the curve. It's very confusing and in many cases it leads people to frustration. Some other things that are not very intuitive about curves are if I make a mistake, for instance I have the shadow point set here and let's say I click in this area, I don't know how to remove that point easily. I can't hit the escape key. If I hit the delete key I delete my curves layer and these are the types of things that add to the frustrations of curves users. Another thing that I do not get from the curves interface is a graphic look at what my colors are and how they relate to each other. I can see the RGB values up here in this area when I hover the mouse over parts of my image, but I don't get an understanding of exactly what my cursor is showing me except for the numeric values. It's very difficult to understand what changes need to happen and how I need to affect the curves in order to make good decisions. In CurveMeister, I'm going to start the interface now, I have a lot more information available to me simply because the tool has a better design to help the user understand what's going on. I have the master curve which we saw over in Photoshop but I also can see all three other channels simultaneously. If I want to set a white point I simply right click and choose set a neutral. This point now is movable. I can move this point around and I can see what the effect has on my image. I can also set a shadow point by right clicking and saying set the shadow. This allows me to find the dark shadow threshold for the image and I know visually, I'm left clicking on the point and moving it around, I know visually that I have set the darkest point in my image. I can also set a highlight point on what I think is the brightest highlight in the image and I can move my cursor around to test that. Those points are now visible on each of the individual curve interfaces as little points on the curve. Those points tell me where in my range of values I would have an adjustment. This is very handy when it comes to doing things like a by the numbers correction where you use the numberings for RGB sample points to help you determine where color correction in the image is needed. Another very powerful feature of CurveMeister is the ability to change color spaces without having to change the image mode. 
For instance, in Photoshop, if I want to change an image to LAB color space, I would have to go to the um, image menu, choose mode, and then choose LAB. In Curvemeister, I can bring the image in in RGB, and I can just switch to lab by clicking the button. This converts the image to a lab system image where all of the values are calculated in lab, and Curvemeister would return a lab correction back to Photoshop, but for now, it's still an RGB image with lab calculations applied. I also have available wide gamut CMYK and an HSB color space, which is a very handy tool for specific corrections. This feature alone allows Curvemeister to utilize some of the hidden power in Photoshop and to bring it all together in one interface that's very easy for you to use. Another feature that Curvemeister has is this hue clock. Up in the upper right hand corner of the screen you see this square that shows a color and the RGB values. If you watch the square, when I move my mouse around in the image, you see that the color of the square changes to match what's under my mouse and it displays the current RGB values. This is a very handy tool if I'm trying to figure out which way I want to move the image and change the colors. The hue clock is completely configurable in Curvemeister. I can either click on this little wrench up here and I can choose the hue clock, hue clock in text, or no hue clock. I can choose the sample size and other various supporting features within the interface. I also can access some of these settings up above on the ribbon bar. Curvemeister allows me to change color space channels up here. It allows me to set points. There's even a color wizard that helps you go through the basic color corrections for your image. Curvemeister is a very full featured interface. It allows me to highlight a curve and I can see based on where I click what parts of the image are affected by this simple sample point. This curve highlight feature is a powerful tool when it comes to finding troubled areas in your image. The Curvemeister interface also allows me to show a single channel on the screen. This also gives me the ability to zoom in and out and make the adjustment window any size I need in order to adjust the image to its fullest potential. This is particularly powerful when you get into the lab color space and you look at a single lab channel Sometimes adjustments near the center of the lab curve are extremely difficult in small curve windows. Curvemeister's movable modal windows allow you to change that curve size and better edit your images. Curvemeister also has a feature called color pins. Color pins give me the ability to choose a known value and place it somewhere on the image. For instance, if you'll notice the sky in this image is kind of pale, I can choose a pin and drop it on the sky. It makes the sky the correct color, but it also affects the rest of the image. So if I take this image into an RGB correction and set a neutral point, you can see it's very easy to get the sky to be blue and still hold the image color correct. Another feature that Curvemeister has is the ability to click a single button for a comparison. Here's the original. When I release the button you see my correction. This is powerful when it comes to finding out whether or not you are happy with the correction you've made and whether or not it makes sense for your overall image. Another very powerful feature of Curvemeister is the ability to use Curvemeister in the Photoshop Elements program. Elements has its own set of curves you can apply basic curves from within the program to an image and you can modify some of the things but you don't have anywhere near the power that you do have over in Photoshop. With Curvemeister I can take an image in Photoshop Elements and I can open the same interface that I'm used to having over in Photoshop and I can apply it in Elements. Changes that I make to the image are transferred back to the Photoshop Elements interface, even in LAB. 
Let's do a quick correction of this image in LAB color space to show you some of the real power of Curvemeister within the Photoshop Elements frame. I've opened my image and I'm going to switch to the lab color space. It's a very fast editing color space. I know from having photographed this scene that this part of the bridge was pretty much neutral so I'm going to set that as my neutral point. I'm then going to set a highlight point and I'm going to verify that that's the brightest part of the image by left clicking on it and moving it around until all of the pixels are black. I'm then going to find what I think is the darkest black in the image and I'm going to set a shadow point. Again, I'm going to move this curve point around until I'm satisfied that I have found one of the darkest blacks in the image. That gives me the full range of the image pixels available for the correction. The next feature of Curvemeister that makes this easy is what's called a saturation slider. With a simple click and drag I can increase the saturation of this correction and make the colors extremely vibrant. Most of the time this correction is more subtle and I'm going to back off here a little bit. The other thing I can do now that I have my range set is I can look for specific problem areas and enhance the photo by making specific changes to a curve that makes the image look nicer overall. Simply click apply and your changes come back to the Photoshop Elements interface and your image is in a better place.